Antique gilded frames have spent many years protecting paintings and enhancing them. But over time, grime can obscure the gold leaf shine and the frame can suffer damage and deterioration. But these frames are highly collectible and restoring them preserves their value. With elaborate cast ornamentation and gold leaf work, this 19th century gilded frame is itself a work of art. But it's in need of renewal. Restoration work done many years ago is cracked and gold leaf is deteriorating elsewhere on the frame. The technician carefully pries the cracked acorn casting loose and removes it from the frame. He'll make a new one from scratch. It will need to completely fill the empty space and look exactly like the others on the frame. He starts by making a mold with dental impression rubber. He kneads the two putty-like components together to activate the ingredients. When the colors uniform and there are no streaks, the rubber is ready for molding. He must act quickly because in just three minutes, the rubber will cure. He presses it around the acorn ornament on the frame to capture the detail. He now has a mold he can use to cast a new ornament for the frame. He'll use this wood epoxy for that. Like the dental impression rubber, it must be mixed thoroughly to activate it. He presses the epoxy into the contours of the mold, pushing it from one end to the other. This will prevent air from becoming trapped in the casting and compromising its integrity. After a 10 minute cure, the epoxy casting is ready and he extracts it from the mold. He examines the detail and confirms that it is an exact reproduction. Then, using a scoop chisel, he sculpts the edges and the inside of the casting to shape it to the picture frame. In this comparison shot, the shaped part is the one on the left. He places the cast epoxy ornament on the frame and nails it down. The epoxy is still soft enough that he can drive the nail into it without breaking it. He fills the gap between the casting and the frame with more epoxy, providing a seamless transition from new to old. After the epoxy solidifies, he brushes something called bowl onto it. Bowl is a mix of clay and rabbit skin glue. It provides a surface that the gold can adhere to, and the rabbit skin glue will give it flex as the wood expands and contracts. He then transfers the 23 karat gold leaf to the casting. Before he lays each piece of gold leaf, he wets the surface of the ornament with a gilder's liqueur, a mix of water, alcohol, and rabbit skin glue. This causes the gold leaf to conform to the contours of the ornament and adhere. After the gold leaf sets for an hour or two, he burnishes it to a very high shine using a tool made from agate, a very hard semi-precious stone. Hundreds of years ago, craftsmen used dog's teeth for this job. He rubs the shiny new gold surface with very fine grade steel wool. This removes some of the gold to simulate natural wear so that it matches the patina of the rest of the frame. And what a transformation this plain epoxy casting has undergone. Newly gilded, and it looks like it's always been part of the antique frame. Other sections of the frame require regilding. He rubs alcohol into those areas to get rid of atmospheric residue that would prevent the adhesion of the new gold. And after applying Gilder's liqueur, he lays sheets of the new gold leaf over the old, working with a steady rhythm to give the area complete coverage. He's aiming for more of a matte finish on this section so he doesn't polish it. He brushes a protective coat of shellac onto it. He's used a combination of old materials and new to restore this antique gilt frame. And it's picture perfect.